The Bell D-188A was one of the most radical fighter aircraft concepts of the Cold War era and remains a striking example of how far American aerospace engineers were willing to push vertical takeoff and landing technology in the 1950s. The origins of the project date back to 1955, when both the United States Air Force and the United States Navy expressed interest in a supersonic, all-weather vertical takeoff and landing and short takeoff and vertical landing fighter bomber and air defense interceptor. Bell Aircraft responded with an internal initiative known as Model 2000, which was intended to satisfy the divergent operational requirements of both services. Two versions were proposed, the D-188 for the Navy and the D-188A for the Air Force. Bell unofficially applied the military designations XF-3L1 Navy and XF-109 Air Force, although neither was ever formally assigned. In fact, the XF-109 designation had previously been reserved for a Convair F-106B proposal and was never officially transferred to Bell's project. Despite this, the XF-109 label became widely associated with the D-188A in later publications, leading to persistent confusion in aviation literature. By 1959, the United States Navy withdrew from the program, leaving Bell to continue development solely with the Air Force in mind. On the 5th of December 1960, Bell publicly unveiled a full-scale mock-up of the aircraft, prominently marked XF-109, and bearing a fictitious serial number derived from a Boeing CIM-10 Bomark missile. No flying prototype was ever constructed. In 1961, United States Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara terminated funding, redirecting resources toward the TFX program, which eventually produced the F-111. Technically, the D-188A was extraordinary. It was designed around a combined eight-engine power plant, all General Electric J85 GE5 turbojets. Four engines were mounted in rotating wingtip pods capable of swiveling through 100 degrees, providing both vertical and horizontal thrust. Two additional afterburning engines were housed in the rear fuselage, while two dedicated lift engines were mounted vertically behind the cockpit. This configuration was intended to allow true vertical takeoff, short rolling takeoff, and conventional supersonic flight up to Mach 2. The aircraft featured a long area-ruled fuselage, a high-mounted, low-aspect ratio wing, all-moving stabilators, and a large vertical fin. Control during hover relied on a bleed air reaction control system, supplying compressed air to thrusters in the nose, tail, and wings. Bell engineers also investigated ground erosion, heat effects, and emergency engine shutdown logic, conducting more than 1,700 test runs. Although canceled, the D-188A was not a technological dead end. Research from the program influenced later vertical takeoff and landing developments in both the United States and Europe, including concepts that fed into projects such as the German VJ-101C. Today, the Bell D-188A stands as a symbol of an era defined by experimental ambition when supersonic vertical takeoff and landing fighters were seriously considered as the future of air combat.